I'm just trying to be simple and I'm trying to be clear with the questions we're looking at. First, who or what is the Holy Spirit? Now, that's a big question, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm not being exhaustive in these categories, but just sort of simple and concise, giving a concise answer. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? Now, I say or what because there have been a lot of her- heretics, Christian heretics throughout history, who have seen the Holy Spirit more as a force, right, Star Wars style, or like the electricity pumping above me right now, than an actual individual, than a who, more like a what than a who, and you just cannot read the Bible and come to that conclusion. Acts 13, 2, for instance, the Holy Spirit said, he is speaking, saying, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So he is speaking and he is calling people to action, to work. Acts 10, 19 and 20, the Spirit said to him, behold, three men are looking for you, rise and go down for I, the Holy Spirit, have sent them. Acts 20, 28, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. He is the one actively making overseers to care for the church of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, all these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who himself apportions to each one individually as he wills, as the Spirit wills. He is a por- a por- that's a difficult word in different form. He is apportioning each one as the Holy Spirit himself wills. Acts 5, 34, 3 through 4, rather. It says, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied to men, but to God. And here's where we get to the real crux of it, right? Not only is the Holy Spirit a who, he is the who of God. He is God, the Holy Spirit. He's a member of that trinity from the foundation of the world, this Father, the Son, or God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. He is God. Ananias, you have not lied just to man when you have lied to the Holy Spirit. You have lied to God. It is clear biblically that the Holy Spirit is not just personal, but that he is the personal God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom, there's that personal word again, not what you have from God, whom you have from God. The Holy Spirit is personal. Is um, Watchman Nee said the, the best way for us in our human's mind to wrap to uh, to wrap our heads around the idea that the Holy Spirit indwells us is to think that there is a person living in us, that a divine person indwells us, that He is personal and that He is divine and that He is eternal and all the attributes of God that we've been talking about on Wednesday nights, His being eternal and immutable and holy and kind, all those things also apply to God, the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we know what the word holy means. If you don't, you can go back in our series on holiness, the um, hagios or kadosh. The words used for holy mean set apart or sanctified, mean this kind of transcendent idea different than all else. And very often when we think about the word spirit, we think of just non-material, right, as opposed to fleshly, which certainly carries that meaning. But there's more to it than, um, than just that. More to it than just can't see or can't touch. The word there in the Old Testament, ruach, is actually a much weightier word. Um, Though it carries the idea, again, of immaterial. Sinclair Ferguson says most fundamentally, the, the word ruach, spirit, Holy Spirit, carries the idea of power and energy. Not energy in the sense of electricity pumping above us, but a powerful, energizing person. Uh, Micah 3 verse 8, I am filled with power with the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord. Isaiah 59 19, the Ruach of the Lord. He will come like a rushing river, which the Ruach of the Lord drives, that the Spirit is driving the rushing river, this powerful water. The Ruach is, the Holy Spirit is driving it along. When When the Ruach Yahweh, when the Spirit of God, when the Holy Spirit comes on individuals, They are caught up in this thrust of unknown power and energy that is unnatural to themselves. And and it's wrong here just to think of miraculous things, right? To go immediately to uh, miraculous, like power meaning healing or power meaning speaking in tongues. It it is more powerful to, to change the heart of stone into the heart of flesh. It is more an exercise of power for me to be made like Christ and to mortify the flesh than it is just to speak in tongues. 
Okay, so it's not just when we say that the Holy Spirit is power. It's not just that he does miraculous things and works worked miraculous things through the first century church. It's that he is powerful to move, powerful to drive in me this living water, that he is behind it, moving it along. Romans 15, verse 13. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. My speech was not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5. Our gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. So the main idea we should think of when we think of Holy Spirit is not just a um, holy immaterial one, ethereal one, but the power of God. And it's not just the power of God. It is the, it is the personal power, that this power is a person in the Holy Spirit of God, that that is who indwells us. That is who called Jesus forth from the grave, called him forth from the grave, not just some force that God is like sending down, but the personal Holy Spirit of power that has the power to change people like me and people like you.